all in all, Shortly is a very interesting AI writing assistant. It stands out for an extremely simple interface. In brief, I think it's very well suited to long form content where the uh, format of your piece is gonna vary immensely and you'll often need to just kind of take a thought, run with it, see where it leads. However, the lack of templates can also be inefficient and even a bit frustrating if you do a lot of the same type of very specific task, especially short form things like advertisements. Tools with templates will have some kind of pre-tuned or pre-trained uh, starting points that you can use to get better results faster. And we're going to see an example of that when we show the advertisement test case toward the end of this video. From the start when you log in, all you have is a list of recent documents, and these are the, the demo, the test cases that we're going to see in just a moment. If you want to create a new one, click on new, and I, I think most of you most of the time will choose this article or blog option. And you have a couple of writing stats, an article brief where you can give general instructions about what to talk about and what tone of voice to use, etc. That will become part of the context that Shortly draws on. Also, the title you enter here will become part of the context as well. You can choose three different output lengths. I highly recommend using the first two because a lot will tend to go, it'll go pretty far off the rails and you'll almost always end up deleting the latter portion when you set it to a lot. But anyway, back to the interface. This is very straightforward. It's a freeform text editor. It's the experience is basically that you write an outline or just begin a thought and it will try to complete that for you. It reminds me of using Google's search suggestion autocomplete more than anything else. Now, what's conspicuously absent are all of the widgets and templates that you'll be perhaps expecting based on other tools. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing completely depends on what you want to use Shortly for. The last thing I want to mention about Shortly is um, you get unlimited use, which is fantastic. There is one and only one price point available. However, if you use it very rarely, it won't be the most cost effective. Likewise, if you are part of a team where you need several seats, that's just not an option at present. And you're gonna to want to, to look at other tools that offer team licensing. Also, you'll want tools that offer some sort of folder or organization structure, because like we saw a moment ago, this really is all you get is a simple list of documents. So with that quick summary and introduction out of the way, let's get into the systematic tests that we've applied for shortly just like we apply to to all of the other tools reviewed on this channel our first task in shortly was to let the ai take the reins on a pretty common generic topic that we know is going to be well represented in the training data set of course digital marketing is a very uh, heavily covered topic online. So this is one of those cases where it's reasonable to expect the AI tool to come up with content that's probably not that detailed or insightful, but it's at least, you know, reasonable and maybe even a little bit useful without a lot of intervention. So this is kind of a best case scenario and we're going to see what Shortly is capable of. So to match the, uh, the version you'll see on the website, I've kept the same initial prompt. We're gonna highlight that and do control, pardon, command shift enter to preserve the command that we just wrote. And that output's not that great. So let's, let's do a command backslash to rerun. This last one's pretty good. That's probably what I would go with just for now. However, to keep things a little more comparable to the, the web version of this review, I'm gonna paste the title that we came up with last time, which was six digital marketing tips to help you create a winning strategy. So pretty decent title really. And now we're gonna fill that in 
for the write-in introduction prompt and the write-in outline prompt. And let's see what it comes up with. Cool, so we'll go with that for now. Again, there's always ways we can manually change and improve it, but we're just looking for something that's reasonable, that's a great starting point at the very least, and that we can let it keep outlining uh, on the basis of. So now we're going to request an outline. Let's see if, yeah, there we go. It did come up with exactly six steps. That's, uh, that's one thing that's kind of neat is it will often match the number of items that you request. So now we're going to see how it fills in between these points and hit command enter. I like to use a little or somewhere in between because when you go for a lot, it can, it, it can start getting pretty far off the rails. So let's see, that is, that is definitely adequate. I'm just going to hit control. <laughs> I keep saying control. I haven't been on a Mac all that long here. I mean to hit command enter and let it fill in the details because it's kind of on a roll with the short term and midterm uh, pattern. This is interesting. It repeated itself word for word. It happens sometimes and that's fine. We can just delete it. And then if we want a little more elaboration, just put the cursor back there. Ah, it really is stuck on that pattern, huh? That's all right. This is where if we were going to actually publish this article, of course, we would probably intervene. But for demonstration purposes, um, I, I think that's good enough to keep going. So let's ask it for brainstorming tactics. And sometimes you can give it just a little bit of a hint that we want a bulleted list or something like that. Let's see if it picks up. Cool, we'll go with that. And I'm just going to continue likewise for the other points. And again, I want to emphasize that I'm trying to do as little writing as possible in, in this example because we're trying to see what Shortly AI is capable of in a really advantageous situation where we know it has a lot of relevant training data at its disposal. All right, so we'll call that good for the body. Um, I would want to fact check whether these are relevant marketing automation tools. Some of them I'm familiar with, some not. So that, that's where your subject matter expertise is always, always, always going to be helpful. You simply can't rely on Shortly or anything else to do that for you. All right, now we'll delete that command. clean up the others. And there we go, about a thousand words that took just a few minutes to put together here. And this is far from a novel and insightful article, but it's also a pretty decent uh, framework to start building off of. We need to do fact checking, of course. We need to find some, often some minor punctuation errors. That's one of the more common issues. Also, surprisingly, I've seen it use the wrong uh, form of it with or without an apostrophe. So that's another little thing to keep an eye on. I do suspect that it makes those mistakes because it's mimicking what people actually write, not because it's just failing to follow the rules. And overall, I'd probably give this uh, a five for grammar and style because there's only trivial mistakes, if any, and uh, probably a four out of five for, uh, for the content quality and relevance itself. There were definitely a few places where I had to point it back in the right direction. But overall, I, uh, I, I think this is one of the better results you can reasonably expect from an AI writer. test was to put together a brief product guide or review, which might be the sort of thing that you'd include in an affiliate product roundup or, or something of that sort. We're just aiming for a few hundred words. I don't want to put you through the misery of watching me write a like, 2,000 word review. 
But the point here is that we've got something very specific, both product details and user experiences, that we cannot expect shortly to know about. We can assume it'll be generally aware of the type of product, in this case, what a pair of driving loafers are, but this is not Google, this is not an information retrieval system, so we can't expect it to cobble together a, a whole lot of details. So, I've put those details in the article brief, and that's what we'll use as a starting point. So we've got a product feature list as well as customer feedback. Let's see what the tool does. For starters, uh, let's get an introduction. And as you might have noticed if you read the blog version of this, it's uh, it kind of went off the rails when I first requested a simple introduction. But in this case, it looks like it's actually come up with something pretty decent. So I don't know about the 1930s. We need to check that. Sock-shaped rubber soles. Not even entirely sure what a sock shaped sole would look like, let alone whether this is true. So another thing we need to double check, but we'll just take it as given for now. The other thing we could do is um, we can give it some prompts. Instead of just requesting a totally free form intro, I turned the article brief into sentence prompts where the facts I had gathered become input for shortly to run with. And of course, as it gets farther down the page, everything above up to 1200 words, I think is the limit. All of that will figure into the context it's using for the current line. So hopefully as we go farther down, it's gonna get more specific and relevant. And I think that's a more consistent way to do this type of article where you have specific facts that you need it to incorporate. Let's see what it gets us. Now this is interesting, it's twice in a row talked about good value, even though we've explicitly said that the price is extremely high. So it's a, a bit contradictory. And that's something you'll wanna keep an eye on where it will generally incorporate the context, but sometimes contradict itself like that. Have to full size up. So that's another uh, another issue. We did specify, whoops, we did specify that length runs true to size. So probably not doing this. So all in all, pretty good. This is hardly a you know brilliant, high converting piece of copy, but it's intelligible and with some guidance, it's incorporated the information that we provided. And when you do have a specific structure in mind, like an overview, pros, cons, and then recommendation, it's extremely helpful with this or any tool to actually lay that out. Because shortly we'll probably come up with something useful, but there's not that high of a chance it's gonna match that structure you have in mind. I know it's tempting to wanna to just hit the button and wait for great stuff to come out, but you'll maximize the odds of getting great stuff to come out if you go to that little bit of extra effort to, uh, to give it a framework to go off of. Anyway, so it came out with bullet points here, which is not quite what we wanted, but it's not unreasonable. There we go. And I think some of that language is repeating what it said earlier on, but it'd be easy to clean up before uh, before publishing. So now we're at, well, over 400 words already. The next task was a, a change of pace. We're doing something that is a, a little bit technical in the sense that there are precise steps to convey but it's not, you know, a deeply arcane field of knowledge or anything like that. So we've got a pretty minimal article brief, basically, give me instructions. And the title is clear and to the point. So we're going to ask for an introduction for starters. There we go. That's more like what we're looking for. 
Again, not great stuff, not intended to use as is, but it should get you started. So say here's how and why. Now let's ask for a, uh, an explanation of why you should do this. Now this is where it gets really interesting. Um, on some runs it's basically correct, on other runs it's, uh, <laughs> it's like it's answering a totally different question. Of course this is where it would be really helpful to give it some specific prompts like we did for the product review. But uh, it's okay, it's doing better on this second attempt. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how the math works out, but you would need a lot more than two tablespoons. So this is another example of where some subject matter knowledge is helpful because six, <laughs> a six cup pot from only two tablespoons of coffee won't taste that good. And we do want to give information that's actually helpful. 303 words. Definitely needs fact checking and some elaboration, but again, it's a great way to get going in a hurry. Final test, we're gonna get Shortly's help coming up with some ad headlines for a fictitious digital product. We're feeding in just a little bit of information because the product title alone is probably not enough information for Shortly to come up with anything useful. So we've added just a handful of details here. Now let's, uh, let's see what it comes up with. All right, we've got some interesting headlines here. I don't think these are anything uh, earth shattering, but they're, they're usable and we could modify them into something possibly pretty good. The next thing to try will be a slight modification to the prompt. We'll request some Facebook ad headlines and see if that maybe uh, triggers something in shortly that gives a, a different style of output. I'm inclined to say this first set is by far the better starting points. But th there we have it, some ads that can maybe get your brain working if you're stuck for ideas or uh, just otherwise be a little extra, you know, creative spark or what have you. Now we're going to shift gears and come up with some ad body copy. We said nothing about sci-fi. Shortly we'll tend to do that, just invent a, a detail that really didn't come from anywhere identifiable. So not quite what we want. Let's do one more attempt. In the blog version of this, it actually came up with three pretty good iterations right off the bat. So I, I think this is, I don't know about this detail, but this is good, if only because it's pretty much word for word what we entered. So let's run it again. There may well be some tips and tricks I'm not aware of to help shortly produce better ad headlines and copy without those pre-tuned templates like other tools use. That said, for a freeform editor, I think it did a reasonably good job I would give the headline and ad copy output a five for grammar and style because there's no significant problems. Probably, probably about a three for the content quality, largely because it tended to invent details that were either not in the copy or, pardon, that were either not in the prompt or were at odds with the prompt. So I'm not convinced that the time it saves you makes up for the time you have to spend babysitting it for all those little details. So it could be useful to the extent that it gives you novel ideas, but in terms of generating output that you can just keep running with, I, I'd say it's only modestly helpful at best. But I know others have different experiences with that, and I would love to hear more about what you've done to, uh, to get better 
copy quality out of this tool. In summary, I would strongly recommend Shorely if you're looking for a sleek, streamlined, minimalist writing assistant that feels pretty much like a basic notepad style text editor, but with a lot going on behind the scenes. So if you write long form content, it, you can expect it to perform pretty well. As we saw with the, the earlier examples of uh, digital marketing tips, uh, the product review with a little user input, a lot of user input actually, and even the coffee maker tutorial, it performed reasonably well with not a ton of handholding. But when we got to the short form conversion oriented copy, um, it, it didn't seem like such a great fit. And again, it could be that there are better ways to use it than what I'm aware of. However, if this sort of uh, headline and ad copy use case is your primary need, then there are better tools for the job. Um, also, as I mentioned back at the beginning, if you need team-based licensing for multiple people sharing an account, or if you need some more elaborate document organization within the AI writing tool itself, then Shortly is not gonna be the best fit for you. But overall, it's an impressive product and above all, I just find it a pleasure to use because there is so little to learn and so little to interrupt when you're in the flow of writing. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this useful. And if you do choose to try shortly out, I would greatly appreciate your doing so through the affiliate link in the description below. Thank you all. Best of luck and take care.